Hello everyone and welcome to episode 12 of this knitting podcast. So um, I'm filming now on Thursday. I had actually wanted to film on Tuesday, however I was really busy. Um, I have actually been going outside more. I uh, went to Ikebukuro and I made a video about that actually because I went to a couple of yarn stores. I don't know if I said that in the last episode but I had envisioned like going on like this huge yarn crawl through Tokyo and so my first stop was Ikebukuro and I think I ended up going to four stores of which one was really like a huge winner and the other two were well one of the three others was actually quite interesting but <laughs> basically okay let me just quickly explain basically uh like one of the places where i had to go was in like this huge building at uh, Ikebukuro station it's called Cebu and it's just like a huge building that has different shops in there and it looks kind of fancy I think it is pretty fancy but you will be able to find like some affordable things there I mean you can get pens there for a couple of cents so yeah um, but yeah so I went there and <laughs> basically you just have people who are just like the um, workers are just kind of like waiting to pounce on you and like what do you need no 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 do you need it and like that is <laughs> that does not work for me at all and so what happens is that, that I start feeling uncomfortable and if I'm not sure that I want something I'll just dip out eventually and that's kind of like what I ended up doing because also like again with yen you know I still have to convert it in my mind and I want to be able to make good deals and so yeah it just like I needed more t time to think essentially so maybe I might go back there maybe I might check the website see their p price range and be a bit more prepared that is if they have a website but um yeah what else yeah, I think that's like enough like personal, well not personal, but like um, <laughs> other things that I wanted to, to discuss outside of uh, what I have been making the past couple of days. Yeah, so first let's start off with apple mints. I, of course I have my book here. <laughs> let's start off with apple mints because I spoke about them last episode. And I had said that there, they have like a ton of really interesting and cool books about crafts but I didn't really know much about the company itself and I didn't want to talk out of my ass so <laughs> so um, yeah uh, I went to do some research and I found out that yeah it's from Japan Vogue um, I th I'm not sure if I thought that was the case last week but I'm pretty sure um, I had an inkling that it was uh, Japan Vogue so they do a lot of things in general in terms of like handcrafts and especially knitting they also have this m magazine called Keito Dama uh, which I've spoken about before on uh, this podcast and it's just like a great resource I think you pay like 1500 yen which is like maybe 10 or 11 euros around that price range and you get a ton of patterns so in terms of Keto Dama um, for me that's kind of like hit or miss because yeah I don't know sometimes like the the designs can be a bit I don't know maybe like dated yeah I think it, it sometimes I do have a feeling that's a bit dated or at least that I don't think that a lot of the fits that they have in that magazine would really look good on me personally but when it comes to apple mints they have like a ton of 
of cool stuff, um, especially accessories and um, yeah, just a, a good series of books and I would highly recommend checking them out if you can. So that's everything for Apple Mints. Now, moving on to the frill yoke sweater. Just a quick somatome. Uh, matome? Somato. Uh, a quick um, summary. That's it. Um, yeah, so it's this. Oof, the lighting. It's this sweater here from Kimi Awashi. Nito by Hana Saido. Uh, this, I've been using this book heavily actually and I think I'm gonna <laughs> use it <laughs> a lot more in the future but um, yeah just uh, let me just tell you a bit about uh, the sweater that I've been working on for uh, a good couple of weeks now um, but yeah let me just get quickly <laughs> through all the specifications so um, I mean if you've if you're following this podcast, you'll know which, which uh, sweater I'm talking about. The frill wheel yoke sweater, and um, I have it here. I ha actually haven't knit, uh, like, I haven't worked on this for two or three days because I went kind of hardcore on this one. Uh, like, the, the thing, the first two or three days after I uh, finished making uh, the last... Uh, podcast episode um so yeah let me show you how it looks now and then I can give the specifications oh ooh. and I ooh. oh yeah <laughs> hey yo <laughs> whoa yo okay so let me just wear it Um, yeah, so this is the back. Let me just wear it for a hot second. Whoa. My eyes are getting bad. I can, like, barely see myself clearly. <laughs> any case, in any case, is what I wanted to say. This is... How far I am at the moment yay so basically um, yeah uh, wait let me just give me give you the specifications so the yarn that I've been using is uh, from Daruma it's called Gemmo Chikai um, Gemmo Nichikai I thought Gemmo Chikai ah yeah it is Gemmo Gemmo Chikai Merino wool in the color forest green uh, the number is four and it is 100% merino yarn and the needles that I've used are four and a half millimeters and I'm actually done with those needles uh, I'm going a needle, needle size down to four millimeters to basically knit the rest of the sweater so the cuffs is that if that's what you call them the cuffs uh, the neck like the neck and the <laughs> and the frill that is basically gonna come from here like starting here and and here so um like this and i believe that everything is done in twisted ribbing which i haven't done before so that should be fun i'm excited to see how it will look um eventually i'm just really happy with how it looks now and uh you know how last time i spoke about how um I kind of messed up the the arm like section because I forgot to cast off three more uh, stitches like it really does not show and I think that even with blocking it will get even better like honestly I I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't like made the mistake myself um, so yeah I'm very happy with that um, in terms of yarn, I feel like I only need about one more ball of yarn. And so I still have like five, aside from that, like five more balls of yarn. And because I have so much leftover yarn, I was thinking of doing another, like another project with this yarn actually quite soon. And um, it's 
a pattern by um, by Daruma because aside from like yarn, they also offer knit patterns, knit kits, um, sewing kits as well, like uh, just a ton of, a ton of stuff. And so I was thinking, I'm maybe I should do that. So basically, um, I I bought this pattern book from them uh, before I came to Japan. Uh, the book is called Daruma Pattern Book uh, 7. And um, basically the reason why I got, got it was because there was this like balaclava that I thought looked really nice and I wanted to knit it and didn't do it <laughs> and so now I figured I, I was looking through through the pattern book again I didn't bring it with me well basically I did because it's I bought it online uh, so it's just a PDF I was looking at the PDF and I saw that the suggested yarn was actually the exact same yarn as um, of the like the sweater uh, the same yarn that I'm <laughs> using for the sweater so I thought oh that's great I have enough like a, a good amount of it and it is the recommended yarn so uh i thought you know what i'll i'll give it a go so yeah i actually i actually haven't started the project i've just been well kind of i've just been making uh the swatch Oh yeah, maybe I should show you how the balaclava, ba balaclava, balaclava, how it looks like here. So uh, yeah, it has this interesting like knit pearl cable, cable stuff going on. And I just thought it looked cute and cozy. So yeah, not right now. I don't even think I... Now that I think about it, why am I doing this in the round? Because I'm pretty sure the pattern is not in the round. Maybe the first section. I think the first section, yeah, the first section is like here is in the round and then you split and then you have like the space for your head. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this has been interesting. Um, I'm not that very good with cables. Um, I do a lot of like... I find it kind of friemelig, like kind of hard to to like. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like <sighs> nifty is not the good word for it. Yeah, like heel full friemelig or may. Like it's uh, it's kind of hard. It yeah, it just takes time. It's a bit hard for me. Um, yeah, maybe I'll put a better translation here somewhere, but um, in post. But yeah, um, yeah, I just thought that it would be a fun and quick project, project, and also just a good way to get rid of the leftover yarn. Okay, so moving on. Oh, coming back to this um, pattern book. I'm really happy that I'm making so much use out of it. But um, yeah, so I think last week I did say that I was working on uh, like a modified version of a pair of crochet pants called uh, crochet pants in this book. Uh, yeah, this one right here. And I used yarn that I got from a lucky bag um, from Proof, um, Knitting Bird is the, like, the brand name, but the company is called Proof, and it's, like, leftover yarn from factories, and I got to say, I was really struggling with getting, um, getting this, this right, um, also, I do have to say, if, you, I don't know if you can see it, but the yarn looks kind of cringe, if that makes sense. It doesn't really look all that nice. And yeah, I basically, I think I made like a bigger, uh, a bigger square. I don't know when that was. Yeah, like I made a, like a, a bigger square a, a couple of days ago, actual, actually to see if the size, like the, like to, I made it for, sorry, I made it for a swatch. 
essentially and I checked and it just didn't like the swatch wasn't I like I needed tinier I think I needed tinier I don't know what I needed oh yeah so basically okay so sorry about this so basically this should have been tighter right the holes should have been s smaller um or I don't know it just didn't okay basically what I'm trying to say here is that it didn't look right and I kept going down crochet hook hook after hook and it just wasn't looking right so I thought how about I switch this yarn and use some other yarn that uh, is also cotton but um yeah like slightly thicker ish so basically i um had some in my stash here from itobatake Ooh. this yarn and uh so this yarn is called baby cotton in the color bear so i i got like a ton of cotton yarn both in uh, from from Itobatake, both like the baby cotton type and then another type of of cotton and yeah I wanted to knit summer clothes with them so I thought this would actually be a good uh, project um, so yeah I I exchanged the other cotton for this and clearly you can see this is thinner um, I think like this yarn was for every 100 meters, it was 220, wait, for every 100 grams, it was 225 meters. That was the yardage. And the yardage for this one um, is 600 meters um, for 100 grams. But I just held everything, three of these cones um, together, turning the yardage into 200, 200 meters? Yeah, 200 meters per 100 gram. And that just created a thicker fabric. And <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks so good. I mean, just for comparison, look how rough this one looks and how smooth and just oh like the feel is so much better it just looks so much nicer um it really makes me like i'm starting to more and more regret like the how would i say it the 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 the, the lucky bag that i bought that gave me this yarn because a lot of the yarn in there actually i don't really think is like of the best quality um and like both of these companies sell like recycled yarn, but like Itobatake has such a higher standard of of uh, quality, I think, and also comes at a better price point as well, I feel. So yeah, really, really <laughs> regretting that at the moment, but uh, it is what it is. In any case, um, yeah, so I'm making quite good progress uh the f like the first uh swatch that i knit which is basically just the the square that i'm gonna use for the garment um i blocked it so i had to wait uh, a day to continue with the rest of the project and the gauge was essentially oh did i mess up something here that's fine um <laughs> was actually perfect so yeah i've been working on uh the pair of shorts so I have now one two three at the moment and uh, the fourth one I'm on like this has um, eight rows I'm on the sixth right now with the fourth one so I think I just need well I'm pretty sure I still need, I still have like a long way to go. I think I need about 10-ish more of uh, of these. So hopefully I will have a, enough yarn. I kind of calculated it and it should be okay. But if it's not okay, I will just buy some more. Um, because yeah, I just really like it. And I also just like 
um, because I was first scared, like, does it look too much like my skin? And if I wear it, <laughs> will it look like I'm basically naked? But, um, yeah, there's a stark difference between me, my ashy elbow, and, uh, the yarn. So I think it will look actually quite cute. So I'm excited to see how, uh, the end result will be. Probably it's going to take me another week or, t or two, two weeks I think, because on average now I am knitting one square per day. I started on Monday, I believe, and it's Thursday now, so I'm working on my fourth square at the moment. So that's that, very excited for that. Um, moving on, I, I'm not too sure, I think I spoke about this yarn uh, two episodes ago and I spoke about how I was work I wanted to make like a, a lace knit mesh top and so I was working on the gauge uh, on the I was working on a swatch sorry um, and you can't really see the lace pattern uh, correctly wait a second did I give all my specs the specs for the last crochet Pants, yeah, oh yeah, I, I forgot to say I was using three millimeter crochet needles for the the brown shorts. Um, but yeah, for this one, uh, yeah, the yarn, uh, this is hand dyed yarn from Japan by an indie dyer called, uh, or their, their company is called You and I. This is Merino DK, so 100% uh, superwash merino and um, yeah I have been using um, lace knitting techniques from this Russian uh, town and uh, yeah I was just kind of like trying several things I took a picture kind of like a I don't know like not that good of a picture but maybe I can show uh, the the pattern a bit better here if I put my notebook in between the floats on the back here we go here we are oh it does not look good here but yeah so basically I was just thinking I was holding the yarn in my hand and I was like this feels like it could grow a lot and then I kind of like remembered people talking about this type of like superwash merino and that it grows a lot and I was kind of like ooh, if I if the holes here are already this big without having blocked it I probably should go a couple of needle sizes down so yeah I was kind of like confused over what I should do essentially well I mean I was confused when once I like was when, once I worked up to this part of the of the swatch but now having thought about it for over a couple of days and like writing down what I wanted to say today I was like why not just go like a couple of needle sizes down and then block it and see how it works out so yeah I think that's what I'm going to be doing but yeah I used um huge needles for these like 12 millimeter needles yeah so basically I spoke about the UNI indie dyer I actually got two um like that was not my full order I got two more skeins of yarn um fur socks this one is gold sock superwash merino it's 75 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nylon it's four ply 100 grams so enough for a pair of socks and yeah I just really liked the color and um, this color as well so I thought I wanted to like show them in like wrapped up before I uh, start making swatches for socks um, so here's like a nice view of the of this game and here is another nice view. Ah, yeah, 
So I've actually got quite a lot of yarn since coming here and I'm thinking about like, okay, how am I going to bring all of this back home? And um, basically I think I found like this vacuum thingy on, on the internet that you just like have a pump and it takes out all of the air. So it like crushes up the yarn and I think that would be a good like thing to do. The only thing is that because like a lot of these are industry like factory type yarns that I've bought they come in these like hard like cone things so I'm gonna have to like use my yarn winder that I got here to <laughs> to yarn uh, to wind them all up so yeah I think that's gonna be a nice afternoon doing all of that and yeah I think that is everything for this podcast episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you soon in another episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>